put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. A live video game review. The protagonist, who I think has a name, but it's hardly ever mentioned, is returning to the fictional town of Haventon a year after a disaster of some sort referred to as the event. It's taken him a year to get from the East Coast, I think it is, back to Haventon, in part because of the devastation but probably also because he's trying to deal with just how bland he is. To be fair, most of the characters in this are. He is trying to get back to his estranged wife, Julie, and their daughter, Mary. And pretty early on, he finds a young girl and helps, and in general, gets into trying to help other innocent people just trapped in this city which was just utterly devastated. Now, there are a bunch of things that one can criticize about this game, so I will try to actually defend the inaccurate complaints. For one, there were some people criticizing it for the, basically the, the relative weakness of the protagonist. He's not, you know, the former special forces. He's a regular guy. He's in good shape, but that's literally one of the first things he says in the opening cutscene is that he, he'd he never fired a gun before the event. This is, he's, he's completely regular guy. So yes, when he gets into melee combat, he doesn't, he can't just take out just a ton of people without any kind of problem. and. Yeah, there, there are various weaknesses to it. It's, it's also, I think, yeah, the first time you save anyone, they literally are like, oh, how, how did you, you know, you brought like a med kit or something to them. Where did you find this? And he's, he's like, it was, it was over there. And yes, in part, that does point out that these resources that are hard to come by are sometimes found in the most strange places and very open areas where you think that they'd be like difficult to find sometimes, but it also highlights the fact that he's not a Russian, he's not even, even, he's not a former firefighter, he's not used to rescuing people, he's thrust into this position, and that's sort of one of the themes, the, the, the humanity and what, what lies within. This doesn't take too much of a moral stance for the whole the post-apocalyptic dystopian dark atmosphere and world but it does it does very much look at what is within us what the the brutality that human beings are capable of some people in Habington have reverted to the law of the jungle, and there's no like indication that this was a particularly bad. I mean, okay, if you came back to like New York City after you know the day after tomorrow just happened, you're back in New York City. Okay, a bunch of those people are probably gonna, you know, it's not exactly the least crime-ridden city in, yeah. 
but this is apparently just a regular town. I mean, several of these, they're referred to as gangs, I think, and so that's what I'm going to go with. Several of these gang members, they look like completely regular people. I swear one of them must have been like an IT guy because he's got that look, the, the haircut and the glasses, and that's, that's it. It just, some people... Yeah, revert to the law of the jungle, and you have to hold them to that. You know, you have to respond in kind. There's no, there's no glory in it. You're not taking out this organized, you know, band of horrible people. No, these are just regular people who, yeah, they, they, they fell victim to that. When, when there is no security in one's surroundings, some people are going to embrace their more base instincts like that. And the basic... And, and at the same time, not everyone who might seem violent is going to be violent. There is There are three types of people. That, all of them are you know, survivors of the event. And you've got the gang members, and then you've got the innocents, which you are to save with your hard-gotten, very finite resources, and then there are just the ones who are scared and just protecting their territory. And they're not actually gonna do anything to you. They're just, they just want you off their turf. They're just, they're, they might threaten you, but as long as you back away, as long as you get away from there, and that's, that actually, yes, that brings me nicely into the way you interact with anyone who threatens violence in one way or another in this game, because some of them are these just scared, just protecting their turf, and some of these are these gangs who basically they're gonna kill you for whatever you might have because they can't produce anything, so yeah. Now, basically there's always a chance that, yeah, you, you have to actually really be careful that you don't mess it up. Don't, don't take too much of a chance with someone who is trying to hurt you and don't accidentally kill someone who is or provoke violence from someone who isn't going to hurt you. And that's something that's I think unique to this game. The the psychological game psychological games that you play with the the, the games. Anytime you meet them you have to... I've already mentioned that resources are hard to come by. That includes bullets. And you've probably heard that before. This is... I'm not sure you could quite call this survival horror. I, someone online called it survival tension, which I quite agree with. I think it was a, on Metacritic, a reviewer on there. And... Yeah, that, that fits it quite well. So, so let's just say the, the whole survival gaming kind of thing, you've heard it before, limited ammo, okay. But this one, it's pretty serious. You know how in other games, you know, Silent Hill, okay, another clip for the gun. Yeah, in this one, you find another bullet for the gun, and that's it. You're, you're always... You, you always have very, very few bullets. And... Melee combat is possible, but you're not going to win if there's more than one of them. Pretty much no matter what you do. The... This is something that some people complain about, and I... I can somewhat see why. Basically, melee combat is... I suppose you could call it a QTE. Basically, you tap one button over and over. And now, just a quick 
in, de in defense of this game. Yes, it is only that, you know, tapping one button over and over. One guy complained, oh, I have to break my mouse, just, you know, it's, it's not only for combat, it's also for, like, straining to lift open a door, which is maybe, you know, it's dust covered, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's partially rusted shut, it's, you know, it's in bad shape. You gotta put effort into it, that makes sense, but yeah, okay, annoying to have to, you know, quick tap the mouse button over and over, okay, but there's a solution for that, go into options, move it to a button on the keyboard. I did, I had absolutely no problems with that. So, yeah, I, I agree that the, the tap thing is a little, it's a tad limited and maybe at least proper QTEs, maybe even better, some more variety would be a lot better, but it's not quite fair to accuse the game of breaking. You know, I, I think, you know, there are actually games that are going to, I've had problems with Assassin's Creed games because you're always using the same. I'm getting off topic. Besides, you could probably reset it. Yeah, no matter. It's probably not a, a problem in those games either. Never mind. Anyway, you can't win if there's more than one person that you're, you know, fighting against. And this is again, this is realistic. Everybody has a mache. I don't know, I guess Haventon was like worldwide biggest explorer of machetes. Everybody in this little town has a, or city has a machete. So it's always you know, it's always machete versus machete when you're in melee combat, and they're just as good at wielding it as you are. And again, they're probably regular people too, if you're a regular person. You're, you're evenly matched, and they outnumber you. So, basically, you're, you're going to be struggling. It's like, yeah, you know, when the, the two blades, you know, meet, and they're struggling, and eventually, after you tap a bunch, you're going to overpower them and slash them. And that'll kill them instantly, by the way. There's pretty much no wounding in this game. And yeah, that takes too long if there's more than one person because they don't do the nice thing of just dancing around threateningly, as I think Roger Ebert put it, as, as you'll see in action movies and in a lot of action games as well when you're fighting. There's no such thing. If you're fighting in melee more than one person, you're not gonna win. That in itself is fine. That's actually that's something I really want to highlight with this. Most of the elements by themselves are fine. It's the combination that kind of screws things up. But yeah, basically, as you can probably tell from that, the idea is try to avoid having to fight more than one person. I've already mentioned that bullets are hard to come by. Now, part of it is, I've, I've already mentioned the psychological games, they don't know right away that you're willing to fight and kill and that you have a gun. So a lot of enemies early on, I've, I've mentioned their gangs, they'll, they'll come at you several at the same time. A lot of them will just basically, they'll, they'll, they'll think that they have the upper hand. It's important that you don't pull, you know, you don't draw your gun immediately because the moment that you do that, they're gonna know that you're, you know, you mean business. But if they just see a guy coming in, so one of them might walk up to you, might try to shove you around, and then you can kill them kill that person without any kind of fight and immediately after you can draw the gun and you have you now have one less person to worry about and add to that that you don't have to shoot everyone you thankfully you can always tell them to back up just not everyone is going to do it and the moment you point a gun at someone who doesn't have a gun, which 
Some of the gang members do, but not that many. Most of them just have the machete. A lot of them are going to stop and like, okay, this dude does me business. However, they're not going to stay in that state forever. And that's where we get some really great tension. You can always tell them to back up. And if you... If, if there is either a steep drop or a fire nearby, you can keep telling them to back up and get them to stand right in front of that fire or that steep drop. And then you can walk up to them and then you can just kick them, you know, over the edge or into the fire with no struggle. And as long as you, you know, and you can do this to them one by one. You don't even have to... In fact, it's a good idea to keep them far apart because if they're too close, and that's something I'm really glad that this made its way into a game because it's a great way to have tension. You literally do have to worry about, if, if they're like five feet apart and you're focusing strictly on one or you walk all the way over to one and then push him over the edge, the other one, he's like, okay, now's my chance and he runs over and you know, attack you. And again, the realism, you can, you die from two gunshots and maybe two or three attacks with the machete. So you're going to want to avoid that. And basically, so, so yeah, you'll want to keep them a, a bit away from each other. Anyway, yes, they won't keep listening when you tell them to back up. They'll, they'll eventually like be, I don't think you have any bullets in that gun, or which you might not. In fact, the first time you threaten, which the game has you do, you literally don't have any bullets in the gun. So you're just, yeah, hope, hoping that, that, you know, some of them call your bluff. That's one thing. Another thing is, they might say, if you, want, if you were gonna shoot me, you'd have done so already. And he might rush you, and yeah, that's another thing you might want to avoid. Now, there are a couple of things to, or a couple of ways to avoid this. The, the one you'll want to not have to do too often is to actually, you know, they're, they're, if they've just called your bluff, maybe you got to show that you mean business. Maybe you got to shoot one of them. Sometimes that'll actually have the effect, you know, especially because the person who will, you know, rush at you like that is the, I think the game refers to them as the tough one of the, of the gang members. He, he's, yeah, he's willing to call your bluff, and if you take him out, the others might even give up, or at the very least, they're not going to call your bluff. They're, they're going to be, okay, you know what, I'm going to listen to this guy. And then you can have them back up. And that means, you know, you'll want to get the tough guy. That's what you want to do. Try to get him to back up against whatever you kick him into first. And then the others won't be as much of a problem. Then they'll be less of a threat to you. Now, the backing up thing is fantastic as an idea. That's the problem. A lot of the problems with this game lie in the execution of these ideas. The, the big problem with it is the, the angle. You have to, like I said, you can tell them to back up. You can't tell them, okay, now go left, now go right. You can only tell them to back up. So if the angle is slightly off, he might be... The edge is here, and he has to be, like, here in order to fall off it. He might go over here, so the angle... Oh man, 3D, yeah. The edge is here, you'll want him here. He'll, he might go over here, say he's here, and you keep telling him to back up. Or he might be, like, here, and eventually he'll just go a little bit, a little bit too much to the side, and you're screwed, you probably have to try it over. You could shoot him, but you might be out of bullets the next time you really need them. Basically, in this game, if you find that I just spent too many bullets, then I retry. That's pretty much what you want to do. 
Now, the, the enemy encounters overall are quite good, however, about halfway through, it almost seems like the, the developers gave up, or I, I, I know that this was like initially developed by Darkworks and then like Ubisoft Shanghai took over, something like that. It seems like the people who worked on the second half thought that this was a first person shooter because they they approached it as such. They start making these encounters with gangs that are just almost impossible to do well on the first try and even accomplishing them you have to do all these awkward jumps like you know, I'm, I'm on a level with you. I'm a pretty stubborn guy. So if, I, if I'm playing a game where I can't win by playing by its rules, I'm probably just gonna try to just be slightly quicker than the AI or find some kind of way to avoid it. Yeah, and I was doing that for a lot of the second half of this game, and yeah, I got through it, but again, it's awkward. It takes you out of the experience. And... There's a lot of times where they have... You know, I, I mentioned that you want to not just instantly draw your weapon. If, if they just are like, ah, look what we have here, and they, you know, try to circle around you, and one of them comes close enough for you to surprise kill them. However, sometimes they also have these guys just suddenly run at you, and out of nowhere, and so suddenly and so fast, that you can't get a an overview of the situation. When when there are like several people that you're, you know, that, that are just approaching you, you, you know, you have maybe three seconds, maybe five, in, in the best cases, where you're like doing a head count. You're like, okay, there's that guy, there's that guy, that guy has a gun, I'm gonna want to take him out as soon as I draw my gun. Okay, this is the guy who walks up to me, and that's Awesome. That's that's great tension, and like you're you're really quickly making a plan and then putting it into action, and when it works out, it's it's phenomenal. However, when they just suddenly rush at you, like they especially do in the later half, you don't have time to like. You might just draw your gun, and you might do it in time even, but then you don't know if, like, the moment you've drawn your gun, you either have to get them to back up against something you can push them into, or shoot at least one of them, and you don't want to shoot them without knowing that that's the only option. And yeah, yeah, it just, it feels like the the people who worked on the second half did not know what the rest of the game was like, really. Now, the, the graphics, considering this game is from last year, 2012, they're not that good. They're, they're okay. If, if you don't want to play games that don't look fantastic, just don't even bother with this one. If that's like a a basic requirement for you, just yeah. Now the basic visual style is very gray. There's some kind of almost oversaturated areas, and it it has this very oppressive feeling. You can sense that this is not a pleasant environment. Your it it. And this is, again, obviously something a lot of survival games do. They, they make you think, you know, something, this is not a place I can remain safe. It, it, it has your mind going like, okay, I, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here as fast as we can, okay. And, and the game does not let you stay in a safe area for very long. What 
wh where this kind of differs from the others is that it it's a very realistic approach to this kind of post-apocalyptic world. There are no mutants, no viruses that are like, you know, everyone you encounter is a human being. And the, the, all of the areas you go through, the, the reason that you have to maneuver them very carefully, excuse me, is that among the things of the event is earthquakes, excuse me. So you'll find these skyscrapers, these tall buildings that are now partially fallen over, that, that, that are like diagonally or you know, diagonally slanted, or like all, all the way down to the side, and it's just, it's really unpleasant. You, you, it, it again makes you think that like the world of man is coming to an end, because these are the things we built thinking they would last forever, and now they're just, buildings are not supposed to look like that. You literally start the game on the bridge into Heaventon, and this is going to sound obvious, it's broken in sections, and if you go to one of the edges and then to, to tilt the camera, look down, you see this raging river, and it in, in fact comes to like a, what's it called, a waterfall. Slightly off, and I, I really have this feeling that it's not supposed to. That's like a place that was hit particularly hard, of, of with the with the earthquakes. So it, it broke off and and created a waterfall where there used to be a, a, a further flowing river, and it, yeah, it just has this really unpleasant. It, it's very very hostile hostile world. And among the, the attributes of this very hostile world is the toxic dust, which basically, if you stay in it for too long, you're going to die. And the way to get around that is to climb up very high above the toxic dust or get into a building that's been sealed properly because there was some there, there was a valiant rescue attempt early on but it all just collapsed so fast that there there you you were finding these buildings and these like supply crates and stuff where it's like okay I can tell that they really tried but of course it didn't it didn't work for for long enough you know, that's also why, you know, that's why there are so many people in there. The, the evacuation attempts failed, or at least stopped at, at some point, and yeah. It, it's probably further reason that the, you know, that some people turn to being these violent gangs, or maybe they did it slightly before not thinking that they would be evacuated, but yeah. Now, that does bring me nicely into exploration, climbing, and the stamina system. Now, basically, I suppose a good place to start is, again, address one of the complaints that, yes, the, 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 some people call this repetitive, say that the gameplay is repetitive. I I can't really deny that, but I will say, I recall that some people were complaining about that with the Prince of Persia games. I think I specifically read it about the, the original of the remakes, the, the, or the prequel, I guess, the series reboot, the 2003 Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and again, Kind of, I guess it is repetitive, but I don't mind. I think it's really about if you like the gameplay, 
or if you if you need there to be something more to it than there is. So where Prince of Persia was either you're climbing around or you're fighting with you know using your sword. In this, you're either in these, like I already mentioned, this combat with a lot of psychological game playing, or you are climbing, and it's very much Prince of Persia climbing. So yeah, if if you if that isn't enough for you, then the game is going to seem repetitive to you. And again, I, I don't blame you. I personally love that gameplay, and I don't get tired of it. But if you do, yeah, it's, the, the game isn't for you. And I, I will agree that they could have done a better job of explaining that in the PR. I expected open world and the climbing is quite linear, actually. After a while, you do get a little more freedom of moving around Havinton, but at the end of the day, it's not terribly open, really. Now, the, the climbing itself, however, I will admit that sometimes when, when you are hanging on to something and you're supposed to be climbing up or down and you press up or down, sometimes it'll go left or right instead, like, you know, right for down and left for up. and yeah, I, this is really frustrating. It happens way too often and there's no reason for it. I don't see why they couldn't just have, and I'm not talking about when you're playing with the camera, which, you know, the camera's completely loose, you know, 360 degrees, although it does stick. This is, this is a console port. You, you can tell it. I could imagine it would be better on the, on the consoles. Anyway, there's, there's really no reason for that. So, yeah, it's also when you consider that to climb up onto, you know, a ledge, you don't press up, you press jump, so I don't really see why you couldn't just have jump be to grab properly onto, and then, you know, use, if, if you're standing at an edge but you're not climbing yet, you can use the climb down or let, or let go button to climb down and again that could basically be used for actually even better would be just have up and down climb up and down I will say I am really relieved that you actually control the climbing it, it doesn't just you're not just holding down a few buttons and then it takes care of itself I, I thought that in the midst of Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed diarrhea about that they had forgotten how to you know let the player have agency over the climbing but thankfully no and and this actually does some really awesome stuff with the climbing it actually builds on some things that they approached actually they yeah, actually they did do some of these things in in Prince of Persia the Sands of Time trilogy I think I'm not sure it really showed up until, like, the two thrones, but basically you have the, you're climbing on something and it's falling apart, so if, if you don't jump to the next bit or, you know, climb on, you're going to fall down with it. That, that happens in this game, and that, again, really adds to how, you know, these buildings have suffered a lot, and now you're climbing on these, you're climbing on like a drain pipe or a windowsill, of course it's gonna fall down, and you're just like, come on, just hang on for just a few more seconds, and the great way they, they do this, sometimes you can tell that it's gonna fall apart the moment you move onto it, so you're literally climbing, and you see okay, this isn't going to last more than like three seconds. It's going to take me at least two seconds to climb to the other end of this thing. So I just, I got to keep moving and just don't look back. And yeah, that's really awesome. That's, and, and it, 
I suppose I could also bring up another complaint that one of the ones I very much do agree with is you can't fall down unless you're climbing or if, yes, let's see, climbing yeah, basically if if you're if you're not climbing, you can't really fall down or, or sliding, I'll get into that more. You can you can run around with no worries. You can't accidentally fall off if you like jump a little too late. You're you're approaching an edge, you know, taking a running jump. If you press the jump key too too late, it just won't jump. He'll just stop at the edge and that's yeah. I th I think they that does take some fun out of it, some potential tension. Now, so the basic climbing is, like I said, it's, it's quite linear. You usually basically have one place to go and then there are maybe one or two paths that you can explore and then might lead to more of these very rare items. And some of these items you might not need yourself, but if you don't find it, there's at least one of the survivors that you won't be able to rescue. And the game keeps track of this. And yeah, so you, yeah, the, the exploration is a quite good, can, can be a quite good idea. And that does restore some of the of the fun in spite of how linear this is. It's also quite story driven and the story is okay but not really. Story and characters in this are not memorable. I don't, another thing that really takes a nosedive in the second half, some of the some of the lines and the voice acting is just really off, especially timing. There was one point where like someone was yelling, you know, don't do that as I was doing it. Or, or like, you know, sort of cautiously threatening me to, don't you do that as I was already doing it. Not, not saying stop doing that, but don't dare do that. So yeah. Anyway, the, yes, so the, the climbing, Basically, the, that, that's where the stamina meter comes in. The stamina meter is what decreases when you're in the toxic dust, for example. It decreases when you run and jump. Now, if you're somewhere that isn't in toxic dust and you are on a plain surface, it will recharge, no problem. And there are also items that can always recharge it. Like, you know, take a, take a soda pop. And, however, when you're climbing and when you're in the toxic dust, it will just keep going, it, dropping. And you have to get out of that situation. I, I agree that it doesn't make a lot of sense that as long as you're just standing, even if you know, that, that that necessarily recharges your stamina because he's still using his leg muscles, especially when you're just like standing, you know, up against the side of a building, you know, that still seems like you need a lot of stamina to, but the way I see it, it's basically how long he can keep a proper hold on what he's climbing on. You know, it's how long his fingers, joints can stand that and yeah. So, Basically, whenever you climb, there's always that threat. Because if you run all the way out of stamina, you're going to drop. And that's almost definitely going to mean your death. And the stamina will decrease faster the faster you move. And you can always tap the... When, whenever you're moving, you can always tap the run button to move faster, and I love this. I wish that more games would do it. You're not just holding down a button to sprint. You actually have to tap it so, so you get into that, you feel the, the effort to it, and there's also levels to it. It's two layers deep, basically. You, you, 
If, if you're just running regularly, if you're doing the running jump thing, if you just hold down the button, he'll run, but he won't sprint. But if you tap it, he's gonna sprint, and the stamina meter will really take a beating during that. And so, so yeah, you, you have a lot of control over how fast you're moving. And that's one thing that'll take, you know, it'll decrease faster for that. It will also, whenever you do a jump, it'll take a chunk out of your stamina. It will, and, and the further you jump, the, the more it'll take. So, remember those things that fall apart that I mentioned earlier? To be honest, there's not an awful lot of them, nowhere near as many as I would have liked, but still, they are there. But if, if you're on something like that, something that where you, know, you can tell this is going to fall, you might be tempted to jump over, but keep in mind it's going to take a bite out of your stamina. So what do you want to do? Play it s slow and more or less safe, or do you want to you know, swap one risk for another? And yeah, you can take a soda pop while you're hanging there to restore some stamina, but if you spend all of it now, are you going to have some for next time? And again, that might entice you to do some more exploration. Now, the... And also about the closing off on the stamina meter. The... When it, when it first runs out, you're still, you're, you're going to be operating on your last ounce of strength. You're going to have to tap the run key just to keep moving if you're climbing. And if that one runs all the way out, you're going to fall. And while you're tapping and while it's, you can literally see the meter slowly, not empty because it's already empty, but shrink. You can restore it, but that's, again, that's going to cost items, and so, so yeah, again, you, you know, do you want to do, do you want to refill the meter while you still have it, or do you want to let it run out and then use something to get it back? And then there's the final thing, actually, to close off the stamina. When you are climbing, you may find some pittons, and... Yeah, you can attach these anywhere you're climbing, pretty much anywhere. Not, not absolutely anywhere, but a lot of different places anyway. And again, that's going to allow you to recharge stamina. And again, it's, you know, not really work in real life. I'm still very happy with it. And that again, that's another option. You know, if, if you see it running out and you don't want to use healing items on it, Maybe attach a pitum and you'll be hanging there. And you'll, yeah, basically, this is, yeah, this is a way to, to get further. The stamina meter is a fantastic idea, and I really hope that more games do this, because it, it makes an issue of something that we usually take for granted, and that's really unfortunate to, to let it go to waste. I, I've been wanting this to appear in a Assassin's Creed game for a long time. I might have actually mentioned that in a video a while ago, that it, yeah, it, it's just, it's so much fun when you can't just be hanging there forever, when there's some tension to that as well. I would have also liked a balance meter because sometimes you're also walking across a, a beam of some sort. And, you know, th this might be an exposed water pipe or like, yeah, a, a billboard, I think. One of those big things that hold billboards. And I would have liked if you if there were also things with that where you maybe, the more worried you got, the harder you had to, and you could take like, I don't know, what's the, some, some kind of drug that, that relaxes you, the, um, you know, yeah, yeah, so settles, settles the nerves, focuses, what's that thing, that, Ritalin, you know, something like that maybe. 
but I can I can maybe see that it would maybe have been a little much to have both if, because you'd be going directly from stamina meter to balance meter sometimes and the stamina meter does do very nicely for the tension. The stamina meter and the climbing part are much more successful than the combat and the health. I already mentioned that you die really easily. Basically, if you mess up in a in a combat situation, you're you're not that likely to walk away wounded. You're probably just gonna die. So it escapes me why they keep giving you like healing items and so, literally it's not about how many healing items I have because I can still only engage in combat. It's not like, you know, the, the enemy will get in a few stabs and then I'll overpower him. If there's more than one of them and they're stabbing me, I'm dead. I, even, if I, even if I load up the gun and shoot one of them, the other one's probably going to keep hacking away while I shoot him and, like I said, two or three stabs, you're dead. So, it's, it's really more an issue of bullets than, than health. And, and that's again where it feels like they... It's, it's especially bad in the second half, where they've... They keep... I guess maybe they're trying to provoke you into spending bullets, but even so... It just, it doesn't work. Like I said, it gets awkward trying to fix it. So. Yeah. Anyway, that that aspect just did not work out too well. I think if they had allowed you to fight off one very quickly, but just with some health loss, so you could be like, okay, crap, I'm gonna have to take these guys out. I don't have the bullets to take them, so I'm just gonna have to take them out like this, and just heal afterwards, or heal during. I, I never actually tried that, but I think you probably can. Like, you know, Spoony pointed this out, that, you know, that, oh, just time out, I'm just gonna heal up in the middle of this fight. In survival games, yeah. Anyway, that really... They, they didn't do that well on that. It... And the... Yeah, I think that pretty well covers that aspect. I want to add one more quick thing to the 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 the, uh, the exploration and such. You do also get yeah, you you get a grappling hook, and this is of course just plain awesome. And it's basically, it allows you to swing from one place to another. You know, not, not like climb, but just you, you throw it, use the rope as, yeah, to, to swing over to the other side. And that's, that's basically it. They really didn't use this anywhere near as much as I'd hoped. And that, again, that brings me nicely back to the, the linear nature of the exploration and climbing. I don't know why they put so much effort into making sure that you couldn't go more places than, you know, than you were currently. It's, it's basically someone, I think it was one of the user reviews on Metacritic, they you know, said you're, you're always being guided. And yeah, you, you don't get to do a lot that the developers didn't want you to do in this game. And that's really too bad, because for the for going different places, I mean, for example, when you get the grappling hook, you can use it to access at least paths that you couldn't really before. So, I don't know why they didn't just do that, that basically it was open world, but you'd be like, ah, oh, crap, I guess I can't go further in this direction, maybe later. But instead, it's always this... Yeah, it's, it's very, very guided, and that just, it's, that's really too bad. Now, the... Um, 
I mentioned the diagonal surfaces and the sliding. This is another great thing. This is something that I... They've sort of done this in Prince of Persia games, but not to this extent, really. And I'm really happy that this that it got put in this game, because again, like, literally, you might be sliding down what used to be a perfectly good skyscraper, but now it's it's slanted and you're just sliding down it. And basically, when you're sliding down, there are a few things you can do. You can, like, use your, your hands to sort of, you know, create, what's it called? Well, it will create friction, but you're, you're sort of, you're slowing down the, the slide. This can sometimes be necessary just to make sure you don't slide too far. Like say you're sliding from here to here and right here you have to get, so if you just slow it down you can get in there. It can also be necessary if you have to slide all the way down and then grab hold of, let's say there's a pipe along the edge. If you're not slowing yourself down, he'll just slide all the way off. But if you are slowing yourself down, he can manage to grab onto that pipe and then you're climbing again and you'll want to watch that stamina meter. In addition, you can also roll left or right. And this is very much something you have to, you know, you might have to use both of these, you know, slow yourself down, then get to the right precision and then very quickly roll. Because again, it might just be this one little hole that you have to roll into or through. And if you roll just a little too soon or too late, you'll die. So that is a really great idea. Now, I believe that pretty well covers the, these, the, the climbing and exploration. Basically, I should mention, along with the, the port, the controls are a bit slow to respond at times, and that can, yeah, it needs no further explanation. Now, the... I already mentioned that sometimes you maybe want to retry an error or the like. The retry system in this is this plain unfair. Basically, if you're playing on any difficulty other than easy, where you have infinite retries, you have a limited amount of retries. And the retries literally are, you know, restored to last checkpoint. And yes, this does indeed mean that if you don't want to spend a retry, you will be restarting that level just to play. And this is clearly something they did to try to prolong the game along with several of the... Several times you'll be told, okay, go out there and get this thing, and then come back here. And you'll literally be going about the same path, out and back in. And they'll, you know, they'll maybe throw in some different enemies, or different enemy encounters, rather, on the way back than on the way out there, or something. But still, you're going back through the same area, and it's a little... Yeah, and still, the game took me seven hours to complete. I could have completed this in a single day if I had wanted to. So yeah, maybe stick to rental. Anyway, yeah, the, the retry system... This is... It's, it's sort of a reversal of what in a lot of survival horror is the do you want to save now thing. You know, the, the checkpoint, you, you get to a checkpoint and you're like told, you can save now, but it will use this item. Like, Resident Evil 2 springs to mind. You, you know, you get to like a typewriter and, well, you have some ink for it. Okay, you can save your progress there. That's, that's how other games do it to make sure that it's difficult. Because it's still, you have to go back to, if, if you fail, and you haven't saved in 15-20 you know, minutes, you're gonna have to redo all that and it creates tension and at the same time you're like, okay, I can save here, 
but maybe I can get to the next save point, so, you know, can I be sure that I will be able to save the next time I get to a save point, so, and in this, they reverse it, and I applaud the attempt to do something different, and again, this could have worked. I agree that a similar system in Hitman, the code name for seven. Hear me out. I agree that it's awkwardly implemented, but it does work. Basically, in that game, in the longest of the levels, you will be able to resurrect if you die part of the way through. And since you die really easily in that game, that makes sense. And it's not like an absolution where oh, just it just respawned all the normal enemies. No, everything that you did, everyone you killed will still be dead, and you get another chance to try to get to the end of the level, or maybe kill the guys who killed you, who are keeping you from getting to the end of the level. There it worked, but here it really doesn't, because there are so many unknowns. There's a lot of trial and error to the gameplay, and this again, as an aspect, as, as an element of the game, I don't think the trial and error gameplay in and of itself is a bad thing, but you can't combine that with a limited amount of retries. That's just unusual, cruel and unusual gameplay mechanics, or, or programming. It, that's, yeah, that's just really setting up rules that are just overly... You can make a game very challenging without making it just you know, unfair like that. Again, I'd, I'd cite, like, you know, Resident Evil 2. I'm sorry, it's the only one in the series I've played other than Survivor, and the less said about that one, the better. I was a soft, light, light gun fan. Just, I know, forgive me, please. Silent Hill. You know, System Shock 2, you can do challenging gameplay without it being just insanely unfair like this. And, yeah, so you're probably gonna wanna just play on easy and that... It's just, it's annoying to have to play it on the easy, easiest difficulty setting just because it's unreasonably difficult on the other end. Okay, so maybe it's like for, you know, play, re replaying again later. Maybe you can try to do it on one of the harder difficulty settings. But it's still just, then, then it's like trying to memorize the whole, whole level at a time and just... It's not fun enough and it's too linear to force you to go over the same things again. Again, I don't think that linearity in a game is necessarily a bad thing. I consider the... I'd say, yeah, it's something like Half-Life, the... I've not played the second one, but the first Half-Life, that's a quite linear game. That's really not very open at all. You know, the, the progression through levels is very linear, but in that, and, and actually, better example, Alien vs. Predator, both games, basically entirely linear, but they use that to establish a mood, and it, this game does as well, I would say, by forcing you to go a different, a, a specific path, and again, that it goes for the Prince of Persia games as well, it escalates. So the the further along in the game you are, and again, I, I still maintain they could have done this without guiding you so much, but yeah, the further along in the game you are, the more difficult climbing becomes. And so so yeah, it's it's fine to have a linear game and it's fine to have a game that forces you to you know pretty much start the level over if you want to return that. Again, like, Hitman Codename 47, except for those long levels, you do have to start a level over if you make a single mistake, or you might, at least. 
And Alien vs Predator 1, you do, even on the most difficult, even on the most challenging difficulty settings. Guess what? Alien vs Predator 1 and Hitman, coding for 10 for that matter, I've played through, including on the hardest difficulty settings, several times because it is so much fun. But this game, it's it's too guided and too linear to for you to really want to over and over. Like those those two games are very linear in the actually Conan Forty Seven is to an extent linear. Anyway, Alien vs Predator le level progression is linear, but enemy behavior, enemy spawning points. Even enemy amount can vary from play to play. So, and, and no such thing happens in this game. It's entirely linear. Once you play one level, it, it, you can replay it, but it's gonna be the same thing. The only thing that offers new, new chances, whatever you wanna say, is the exploration, which if you're playing on easy, you might as well just do the exploration immediately because the risk is no greater than... Yeah, so you can just play it once and do all the exploring you want and... Yeah. And if you're playing it on a harder difficulty and the, then the exploration just becomes something you probably don't really want to... Like, if, if you don't save all the survivors, for example, you won't get as positive rating at the end of the game, but that's, that's it. It's, it's not, it, actually that's something that I should mention. Helping survivors also begets you retries, but again, with the trial and error gameplay, these retries won't last very long. And yeah, it, I, I, I think I've pretty much made my point through that. Some parts of this game, especially in the second half, almost feel like they weren't play-tested. The... yeah, like I've already mentioned, it's, it's especially with the combat, where it suddenly thinks that it's an, a first-person shooter. The game provides too many hints and pauses to prompt you to do something too often, pausing you to let you know that, you know, you should probably do that. I, I know, I get it. I, I, I can tell that this situation is that, you, you told me that before. You, you know that, right? And it, yeah, it, it again just really takes you out. And these are like, yeah, again, the guiding thing. I, as far as I could tell, you can't turn this off. And it's, yeah, really annoying. Now, the, the ending, it's okay. I, I saw some people saying it was just terrible. I, I, I want to divide it into two. There's the climax, or rather anti-climax, and then there's the actual story conclusion. The anti-climax, Oh yeah, it, it's just not really that much of a climax. I don't... They kind of wrote themselves into a corner. I, I've already mentioned how, you know, you're supposed to save bullets, you, you have to climb things. You can't really go that many places with that. Like, near the end, some of the most tough climbing is, but the... The combat, it was difficult and tense before the second half began, but then in the second half, it's just ridiculous. It's like, you're not, you're not actually expecting me to be able to do this, are you? And yeah, now the, the actual story conclusion is not that much of a twist. I feel like they gave it away really early. I don't know. I, I do appreciate that it does have this... you kind of almost figure out what's going on over the course of, or you feel that it gets more and more obvious what's, yeah. But, yeah, the actual story conclusion, it's just, 
it's a meh. We've seen it before and yeah, you're not that invested, sadly. I, I already mentioned that the characters and story aren't that interesting. They're, they're pretty... I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're just not that compelling. Maybe especially our protagonist. Maybe it's, it's supposed to be like the, the, the Twilight Blank Slate thing where, you know, the lead is so ill-defined that you, the player, defines him. And certainly, you choose how many to help. Yeah, so, but, but, it's just not that, yeah, it's not that compelling. Now, the... Let me think... The... I very much appreciate that this is, like, one of the only... It might be the only, I don't offhand know of other realistic takes on this post-apocalyptic survival thing. I already touched upon this, but I, uh, I wish to broaden it somewhat. I, you, you could compare this to The, the Road, the 2009 film, which is fantastic, by the way. It's, it's very much about what is, I mean, it's easy to look at the, you know, Look at a post-apocalyptic world where, oh, well, there are zombies, or there are, like, mutants, and, well, oh, there are the bad guys. Okay, so, yeah. But when it's regular people, I mean, these, these don't look like, this is not Mad Max. These, these guys don't look just horrible. And they're, they're not these absolutely, you know, they're, they're basically regular guys who have a machete, you have a machete, and they... Yeah, they, they feel that this is the way they're going to survive. And, yeah, it, it does go into that those moral issues, very much in the moral grays. Uh, the, what, is, what is okay? And I'm not going to give too many details about that. Because it's, uh, yeah, you should find out for yourself in the game. Or if you don't want to play the game, just watch this, you know, thoughts on video. Now... That might more or less be it. <sighs> Another thing that they do in the to I guess prolong the game is there's this replay feature. Now this is sort of a level selector, but you can't excuse me, you can't unlock you can't unlock achievements in it. You get uh, you know you don't get too many, what's it called? You know, your inventory will have less items in it, and you can't affect your saving. You can't replay a level and then, you know, go to a specific place and then, like, save someone who you had, and, and then nobody said, no, just it's not gonna happen. So, yeah, I think we're at least two solid steps beyond why even bother to include this feature in the game. I, I, yeah, I can't even imagine wanting to, to, to try that. Why would you bother exploring if it's not going to help you any? But yeah, at the end of the day, it's just not really that memorable of a game. It's, I enjoyed, filling my Prince of Persia climbing fix, especially now that I've once and for all, you know, I'm, I'm a recovering Assassin's Creed player, so yeah. Never was too much a fan of the franchise, it, it did a lot wrong right from the onset with a concept that could, that could have worked. And I only played it for the the, the the climbing, and then you know for a little while people kept you know giving me the the sequels as gifts, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I, I 
I'll play it then. So, yeah, so it, it filled that need for me. But if, you know, if you're not, if you don't love that kind of climbing stuff and, and the, this post-apocalyptic world, which I do quite like this vision of a post-apocalyptic world, which again, I find is quite different from the others. There's nothing supernatural to it. There's no sci-fi. It's completely, and that, that makes it all the more chilling. This is what we might fear would happen if, if a just giant catastrophe happened. So, yeah, those are really the reasons to play. And, and the psychological game aspect is at least, it's fun to try. But again, I didn't maybe go for just a rental. But yeah, if those aspects do not appeal to you, this is just not a game for you, plain and simple, and yeah, I, I really can't blame you. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.